Thanks for that, Margaret. Right, well, one company indeed profiting from closer ties between Russia and China is the uh, Russian miner IRC. It produces iron ore, titanium in the Far East and uh, listed last year on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The second Russian company to do so after Roussel, IRC's chairman, is Jay Hamra, who's with us now. Well, placed to discuss this subject, uh, he's going to be meeting with the Russian president on Sunday. We'll come to that in a second. But 20% plus your share price in the last two trading days, what's that all about? Well, I think it's a realization of what we're doing. The we are building a, what we hope will be a huge company, 10 million tons of iron ore in 2015. And what we are delivering at the moment is no news equals good news. So That was we, what your message to the AGM yesterday, I'm assuming. Exactly. We, we announced that uh, our first quarter was 52% up, Q on Q. So that's the gradual ramping up of production. And uh, we're sitting in a great place. The combination of geography and geology in our location is is uh, a great asset to have. And it's all about China, I, I'm assuming here. You, you're producing stuff in, for the far east of Russia, and you're selling it into China. Absolutely. We, we are essentially a very Chinese company. We're, we're located our headquarters in Hong Kong now. Um, all of our product comes across the border to China. Our contractors now are all Chinese. We raised $340 million from ICBC uh, in December. And of course, we raised $240 million here in our IPO last year. Yeah, I'm going to come to that. I mean, are you running out of money at the moment? Would you need to have more? <laughs> well, no, we're still very well placed. We've still got um, circa $200 million on the balance sheet. Um, and we haven't drawn any of the debt down yet. So that, that will draw down. We've got our Chinese contractors, CNEC, arriving on site very shortly. And uh, as soon as they start working, we start spending the big money. All right, well, um, you made a net loss of, what, $82 million last year. Are you going to be profitable, prof profitable this year, or when do you turn profitable? Um, we, um, we announced uh, earlier this year that we now have a, a cash flow positive business at Kuranak, um, which is our, our first smaller operation. Last year was part of the development year, so Mr. Medvedev very kindly came and opened our site um, in the second half. So we had a, a base of fixed cost and an increasing revenue. So last year was always expected to be a, a loss. We could forecast 95 million and we actually made an 82 million dollar loss. Um, this year we hope things will be uh, considerably better. Okay, so will you be profitable this year? Which I can't, I can't answer questions like right, that. You must <laughs> have an idea here, Jay. Um, it's it's going to be a good year for us, I think, yeah. All right. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about Dimitri Medvedev. You meet him on Sunday. What are you going to be talking to him about? Um, he, uh, he's very supportive of the Sino-Russian ties, and uh, we ultimately are a, a great beneficiary of that. As I said, all of our product at the moment is going across the border to, to China. Um, we are a Russian company, but we're between 40 and 60 kilometers away from the Chinese border. So um, we're a Sino-Russian champion, and that's the, the business that we want to build. And uh, there are other projects like the Bridge Project, where, where we look to, to be involved in a project which literally bridges the border between Russia and China. And uh, so the support that we get as a, a champion of, of that cross-border trade and a champion of building a, a, an industrial commodity business in the Russian Far East is very strong. Yeah, right. And y have there been political hurdles to get this relationship smoothed out? Um, I, I think the relationship between Beijing and Moscow is very strong. Um, it obviously hasn't always been so strong. But uh, the, the new oil and gas pipeline is a very important business for both sides of the border. They realize they need each other quite badly, I, I'm assuming, yeah. Well, I, I think that the, the position that the two countries find themselves in, uh, going around to meet people here, the phenomenon that is the Mongolian mining business is very strong. People often ask me, how are your assets in Mongolia? I say, no, 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 we're in Russia and, and we're in northeast China. Um, but people now realizing that the border with Russia is equally as important. All right, let's just talk about iron ore prices now. Where do you see them going? I mean, I talked to you in 2008, and you were expecting 10% growth year on year. Uh, I was right. <laughs> you, I think you, 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 it beat that, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what, what about now? Um, I think my, my line now is it's going to be strong for long. And what, what I mean by that is that the demand growth is definitely there. And the reason we've seen the price increases has been that you've got this inequilibrium between the demand and Undersupply, supply. Undersupply, essentially. Undersupply, exactly. But are we getting to the point where we're, seeing we're becoming neutral in that and we're seeing an equalization? I think supply will uh, be increasing, but demand will also be increasing. And I think that the, the major boost to supply will come in stream at about 2015. So at that point, you'll see a better equilibrium but for the foreseeable future I think it's going to be very strong.
Jay, thank you very much. Jay Hambro, he is uh, the chairman of IRC, second Russian company to list here in Hong Kong after Russell. Uh, just coming up also after the break, we're going to be speaking to Sir John Gee. He's a former deputy governor of the Bank of England on uh, the challenges for Europe. That's coming up right after this break. FXCM brings you the World Currency Update. Currency Report is brought to you by FXCM. Experience superior currency trading with FXCM.